Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. I think it's time. I think it's time to finally have a real moment of introspection. It's time to have a moment of realization that the current path is unsustainable. You know, at one point I was convinced that Democrats were just screwing themselves, that what they were doing was unsustainable. All the crazy wokeness, the failed economic policies, the foreign and domestic policies. There's no way it's sustainable. The Democrat Party is going to implement load and the pendulum's gonna shift but i'm gonna be very honest with you guys i think my perspective is changing entirely after the election that just passed a lot of people want to say a lot of things and look there might be other factors i'm not denying it but at the end of the day how much of that is cope are we convincing ourselves of this new conservative age and this new grass movement that exploded on the scene in 2016 are we telling ourselves that it's growing and we're gaining momentum or has it plateaued and the one question that i continue asking myself is what's gonna happen with the next generation I see a lot of headlines claiming that Gen Z is the most conservative of any generation. But I'm not sure the stats back that up. And as millennials and Gen Z grow up, and the older generations inevitably phase out of existence, are we being foolish telling ourselves that the pendulum is going to swing to a new conservative traditional era? Honestly, I'm not so sure. And this election, for me, honestly, is starting to get me a little bit worried. Let me show you guys exactly what I mean by that. We've got some stuff to get into, so let's Let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so we have this piece right over here from the Daily Wire. Second largest turnout of young people voted in the midterms in 30 years. Young voters came out to this year's midterm elections in the second largest percentage in at least 30 years. The Center for Information and Research on Civic Learning and Engagement at Tufts University released an early estimate showing that around 27% of people ages 18 to 29 voted in 2022. They also believe that the number of young people voting was even greater in some states that had major elections. Elections. Around 20% of young people typically came out to vote in elections since the 1990s, but in 2018 that changed. Four years ago, around 31% of eligible voters in that age range voted. According to NPR, Deputy Director of Circle Abby Kisa said Thursday that 2018 is still a high watermark for young people voting in midterm elections going back to the 1970s. According to Pew Research, around 47.5% of people who are old enough to vote came out to cast their ballots in the 2018 midterm election. Elections. Fair Vote noted that U.S. voter turnout is typically around 40% for midterm elections. Kisa added that young people voted even more in battleground states. Florida, Michigan, Georgia, North Carolina, Nevada, New Hampshire, Ohio, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania saw around 31% aggregate young voter turnout, according to Circle researchers who used available data from exit polls. Circle's report also pointed out that young people voted for Democrats more than they voted for Republicans. The Edison Research Election Poll exit poll showed that youth vote selection across the country was 63% in favor of Democrats and 35% in favor of Republicans for the U.S. House of Representatives. And the way I feel right now is that I think Republicans have a blind spot. I think Democrats may be onto something. You know, we laugh at them and we meme at them with their use of cringy TikToks and Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez being on Twitch. But what if it's all a careful calculation? What if they've realized that they no longer need to be the party of the working class? They no longer have to have strong stances on border protection, crime, or even the economy. All they have to do is pander to the youth vote and continue to push their voter drive initiatives on all of these social media platforms like TikTok and others, targeting youngsters and getting them to show up to the polls to vote for the future socialist dream. What if we are underestimating that? You know, it played a role again in the election analysis, I think, from most people who were doing predictions. Looking at the data, understanding historically that midterm elections tend to be low voter turnout, and especially with young voters, the thought process was that youngsters would be too busy playing Minecraft to show up and actually vote. Well, maybe that's no longer the case. And maybe with all the changes to the voting system, especially vote by mail, maybe it's become convenient enough for more youngsters to participate. And Democrats know that these young minds are malleable, easy to manipulate, especially when it comes to the whole student loan thing. You have youngsters going to school accumulating student loan and if you tell them we're gonna cancel tens of thousands of dollars of your student loan well then their vote is pretty much guaranteed it's secured especially considering they're in these extremely leftist environments these leftist communist indoctrination centers that we call universities and so it's no wonder we saw data from the University of Michigan where students attending that university voted 94% for Gretchen Whitmer and Democrats down the line we got to come to terms
terms with reality here. Each and every single generation is becoming more and more left-leaning. A lot of people say Gen Z is the most conservative generation of them all, but really, if you look at the data, they're the least. Now, you could also interpret this data that as people get older and older, they tend to pick a side and they tend to trend Republican. Of course, that's true. But in a certain way, it feels as though that trend is weakening. With the collapse of masculinity and testosterone and just the wacko progressive youth culture that's developed, just how widespread it's become, I think there's a serious threat of this woke mind virus being a lot more malignant than initially expected. And so, of course, the question that I think people need to be asking themselves is what's the cure? Well, very simply, the cure is to compete with the Democrats. Democrats pour a ton of effort into the youth vote with their messaging. The question that I constantly ask myself is why aren't conservatives doing the same thing? You know, this new conservative style has a little bit of a counterculture, anti-establishment flair to it. Why not use that to our advantage? And this is why it's more important than ever to build something new. Josh Hawley said the same thing the other day. Josh Hawley says Republican Party is, quote, dead. It's time to build something new. And he's absolutely correct. The dad jeans wearing Mitt Romney stick up their behind Republican Party of old is unattractive and especially unattractive to youth voters. Mitch McConnell, of course, the same thing. These old guard Republican fossils are the biggest down drag on the party. And there has been literal zero effort to address issues that are important to young people. You know, the reality is young people are struggling. Young men in particular particular, it's pretty damn rough. In a lot of big cities, in a lot of places, it's tough to get a foot forward. It's tough to start. It's tough to buy a home. It's tough to create something for yourself. You know, I follow conservative movements across the Western world, and I notice that the conservative leaders who perform the best are those who actually address these issues with clear, concise, targeted political messaging that makes young people hopeful of a future of economic prosperity and opportunity and the ability to build a future for themselves. I feel like that's what conservatism should be be focused on. When I'm speaking with my friends or having discussions, the conversation generally heads towards that direction. Why is it that political messaging isn't tapping into that? Why is it that right-wing political messaging isn't tapping in to that need and want of young people to be able to establish themselves in society? Unless Republicans offer a clear alternative solution, alternative vision to what the Democrats are promising, what we're seeing is going to continue to happen. Democrats are going to continue to promise more free crap, and young people are going to vote in droves, especially with the new systems that Democrats have implemented in some of these most important swing states. It's time for a moment of reckoning. It's time to start targeting important demographic groups. And clearly, that's what Democrats are doing and Republicans are failing at. You know, the fear of socialism might work in places like Florida, where Latino voters or particular Hispanic communities can resonate with that messaging and it leads to amazing election results. But what we're learning is what now works in Florida doesn't necessarily work in other places. And it's time for the Republican party to have a massive rebranding moment and it's time to start targeting demographics and start crafting some strong messaging campaigns to compete with the democrat machine underestimate the democrats at your own peril it's time to start playing the game that's my opinion and hopefully you enjoyed it and if you did make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel i'm gonna get out of here thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one